document that doesn't have Can I correct that? Does a couple I am. Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order at 6.07. Um, first, I'd like to thank everybody for coming tonight. I really appreciate this. Um, this is an important discussion, and I know, um, I know that people have things they'd like to say, and we're going to discuss a bunch of stuff, and um, if after our discussion you have another question, maybe we can, if, we, if we're like in the right time frame, let me know, and I'll try to... Because this needs to be a discussion. Anyway, we need to alter the agenda. And where is that supposed to be on the agenda? Because it's not on the agenda. We'll just do it now. Okay. Um, we need to tack on an executive session. So can someone make a motion about doing that? I'll make motion. a motion. We add it in executive session for the purpose of? Personnel. <coughs> personnel conflict. Per personnel conflict. Contract. 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 Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. I um, would also like to okay. request that we add um, Beehive sent me, you guys have power of attorney that has to be signed for the health insurance to be effective July 1 as the new entity. Um, so that we have the power of attorney that you guys can sign. Okay. Um, for your health insurance and dental insurance. I understand that, but the uh, state is the one that's doing the negotiation now. Not for the right current, it will be for the next calendar year. Well, this board takes effect. July 1. July 1, and that's <coughs> when the health care. Health insurance is calendar year, so it starts January. Um, I, so you're responsible until December. Until December 31. I'm still, okay. Go. So I'll say somebody can make a motion to add that on, but I'm just going to say I have a great cold, and I do not want to stay super late tonight, so want to try to keep this succinct so we may have to table some things if we can't get to all this i have a 7 30 hard stop personally so anyway if somebody want to make a motion to add that to the agenda please we have a scheduled meeting for the 25th well actually i thought 20th. we were canceling the 20th because you're meeting tonight so i didn't understand that we were canceling the 20th I didn't. Okay. okay yeah, my understanding was tonight was only principal search. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, that was what my understanding was. Yeah. That we were meeting for the, special. we were meeting for 10 minutes to go over the tax anticipation and the, yeah, the bond resolution, right, and adopting the policies. That's what I understood we were doing on the 20th. Well, yes, but when we emailed, it was my understanding that you wanted to call this meeting so that you could address other the issues that we assumed that we could just rolled everything. I, am, I understand that. That's I okay. think that I think all I'm saying is just that the principal discussion is the reason for this meeting and so I think that we need to that is absolutely imperative that we figure out what we want to do moving forward. I don't want that to get tabled over to the 20th. Signing of these other things I think could happen on the 20th. We were only planning for a 10 minute meeting that day anyway. I didn't feel like it was appropriate to wait until the 20th and I thought there wasn't enough time. So, um, okay, so public comment. <laughs> Saw your hand first. <laughs> uh, I'm Victoria Von Hester. I'm here as a Greensboro resident and taxpayer. As most of you know, I'm also the chair of the LAP board. When we decided to look for a <coughs> principal, it was with the understanding that the first year as a merged district would be a time of getting to know you and a time for the dust to settle. We felt our teachers and students and our community would benefit from some stability and a slower process rather than the one that was thrust upon us without our asking last November. It takes time to build solid, trusting relationships after all, and the last few months of working through this process have shown how difficult it can be to build trust when so many have some specific interest or agenda to protect or advance. I'm conflicted about the proposals you are reviewing tonight. As a nervous resident, I see this as a continuation of the slow process, deliberate and calculated or not, of undermining the smaller schools in the merged district to the point where they are no longer viable. Will parents trust this new model? Will they instead choose the building that has their quote unquote real principal in it? Will teachers feel secure and confident in this new leadership structure? The details are thin. You may be facing a choice you make now and have to ask questions later. And there are so many questions. 
Given the wounds, anger, distrust, distress, and anxiety caused by a merger push through from on high, I would, as a citizen, caution pushing through large administrative changes quickly and without making the effort to have this be a community-driven effort, or at least one that has buy-in from the school communities to do better and think creatively. That being said, I'm also a board member for now, and I know that change, both necessary and unnecessary, happens at a snail's pace in this bureaucracy. As Joanne pointed out in her description of these proposals, ideas like this were floated four years ago. Change and risk make people uncomfortable. As a board member, I know that the numbers will demand change in the not-so-distant future. I also know that community-driven change is hard to come by in our corner of the world, and even then, getting an equal representation of stakeholders is near to impossible. And I know that to remain viable, our schools and our communities will have no choice but to wrestle with and make the effort to see how change could create more vibrant schools and towns. This isn't just about one town or the other, it's about all of them and about all the schools. Thank you. Uh, make a motion that the remarks be uh, um, submitted. Uh, submitted to the for minutes. Okay. Thank you. Thank for you. The <laughs> um, Diane, Zach, and then Patrick. Um, I'm Diana Fiducia. I'm a town clerk in Woodbury as well as a resident and a taxpayer. I just wanted to say, I mean, thank you for all you're doing. I know it's been really hard, but I was really disappointed at the decision not to send out any notices to the public, individual households for either the budget vote or the articles vote. There are people who came to vote on the budget and they just voted no because they had no idea, you know, they hadn't seen anything to vote on. It did pass anyways, and I just can't envision people coming in to vote on those articles without having seen, uh, you know, there's like six pages of a ballot. And even though it's all confusing, there are people who care about this stuff and who pay attention and so um, I had some emails with some of you last week and it was clear that that wasn't going to happen, but the select board agreed um, that they authorized me to spend $300 to send out a copy of the notice to all the uh, 400 uh, households in town. And what I was wondering whether I could put a tagline on that uh, for any questions people could call. Cam or Phoebe, can I do that? I know. Oh. <laughs> you never home. <laughs> I could call you. Yes. I could ask email. people to call you or email you. Okay, how about you, Kim? Yeah, okay. Steve's not here, but he was um, involved with the article. So, so um, yeah, I just think it's a poor way to start this whole merger thing involving the community, but uh, hopefully next time this comes up, you'll. Uh, uh, pay more attention to all the voters, not just like it would be a case of 20 of us who came to several meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I understand tonight there's going to be a discussion about uh, how the new district will be organized around principals uh, in the schools. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And I understand, I learned five minutes ago, that a proposal was sent out earlier today. I have not seen it. I don't check my email every hour. Um, so I feel at a big disadvantage here. But uh, I did want to say something in advance of your discussion, and hopefully there may be some opportunity during your discussion for some other comments or input. Um, but I think it's an absolutely critical discussion to be having. Critical. The people of Woodbury met in this room just over a couple of weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, um, to approve a budget for the coming school year, which they did. And one of the questions that came from the audience was, why do we need a full-time principal? And I defended, I think in rather strong terms, uh, diplomatic but strong, um, the need for a principal in this school. I, as some of you know, I have been on and off school boards for 30 years in this, in this district. Both the elementary school, uh, the Hazen board, 
obviously on the OSSU board, etc. And one of the things that I have observed is how complicated and difficult the administrative work has become. And, I, and, and it's across the board. It's certainly true for the superintendent and, and all of her and his staff. Um, but it's become a nightmare, actually, administratively. And that has trickled down to, to the principals. People that we would like to be educational leaders and supervisors of teachers have become burdened, I think, with a lot of unfunded mandates, et cetera, and we don't, need, we don't have time to go into all that tonight. But also, my observation is that the kids that are coming to school these days have way more challenges and needs than the kids who came 30 years ago when my daughter entered this, this school. Uh, and Principals find themselves spending an enormous amount of time dealing with kids and parents and the trauma that, that we see in our community uh, today. And I don't know how principals do it, frankly. Uh, and, and whether you have 50 kids or 100 kids, you have all that problem. And there's simply no way to shortchange it and, and, and still deliver a quality education to these kids. Uh, so I don't know what the proposal is, maybe it answers all my questions and I'll be here feeling great. But the people of Woodbury expect that we will have a full-time principal in this school for the foreseeable future. And I know that the future is uncertain and there's a lot of changes that will happen. Um, I understand that, but I, as Victoria said, I think that should evolve in a process of the community coming together and having really in-depth discussions about what we want, what's important, how we're going to achieve the ends that we want in this new environment. It should not be rushed. Um, I've been against this process from the start because when you rush, you make bad decisions. And I understand the imperative of where we are right now. The principals have left or chose to, to leave, and we need to replace them. It's very difficult to find somebody, especially in an environment where no, where no principal coming here knows what their future looks like. It's going to be very hard to find principals uh, who are willing to, to dedicate themselves to this, this school or any school in this environment. So I appreciate the difficulty of it, but I, I really think we have to make the decision and the commitment to recruit the best people that we can for both this school and for uh, Lake uh, View until such time as other decisions get made. That, and that, again, I, I think I represent the people of Woodbury. We sat in this room, we had the question, we discussed it, and we still approved the budget that allows for a full-time principal. So that's what the people here expect, and that's whose voices I'm representing. But I'm also here to tell you that if we short shrift this, we will regret it, and the, and the, the children and, the, and it will be the, the major sufferers uh, as a result. So I could go on and on, obviously. I'm not going to. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. thank you. Is there any other public comment? OK. OK, I'm John Miller from Standard and uh, also a member of the Lakey Board. Uh, for your information, the Lakey Board had an emergency meeting preceding this meeting, and we voted to close our principal search, um, having, um, having lost our candidate that we had offered the job to. Our second motion tonight was to defer the choice of of our Lakeview Administrator to the uh, new, new union, union Board. Good luck, guys. Um, and one of the things that we were very aware of is the very strong sentiment for, in our community, for the existing structures. But I, I mentioned at our meeting was, it was with some sense of irony that my, I remembered 50 years ago, when I was in the service, uh, as a matter of 
national policy. Uh, we were busy destroying villages so to, to save them from falling into enemy hands. Uh, the same image could be invoked. You were the enemy uh, and the, the village was the status quo. We've got to be careful about this because when we started the whole Act 46 ent ent enterprise, uh, Woodbury was, in, Woodbury, both Woodbury and, and Lakeview were, were looking down the road saying, well, we've got maybe three years, maybe five years before we're going to have to jump. And all of a sudden, you are, the, the mandate to jump is suddenly met with resistance. We've got to have some courage here. And uh, certainly uh, the local feelings about how to move forward will need to be addressed very carefully. And uh, certainly uh, a very open, uh, very open process is, is required here to make the type of progress we're going to need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yes. My name is Jen McLean. I'm a resident of Hardwick. Um, I, I would like to second several things that I've heard in public comment. I believe that this is a process that needs to be taken slowly. I think that we have so many changes happening already that um, if we could just keep a principal at each school for the safety and um, benefit of the children for now, while we get to know each other and get to see how these schools will work together in the future, and I believe that they will work together in the future and do it well. We just need time to get there in a way that doesn't scare everybody into an adversarial role. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, any other public comment? Okay. I have a public comment to give to you, just okay. for the record, record from Trace Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you all want me to read this? I guess I should probably, re should I read this aloud? Okay, so this is from Trish Alley. As I think you all know, I am disappointed by the way Act 46 has been interpreted and implemented in the last year and the ramifications that it is having in our community, and I am not easily discouraged. And I am feeling discouraged now. I was honored to be chosen as the community representative on the search, part, search committee for an interim principal at Lakeview. I was most horrified by the process, which I understand was largely dictated by the state of Vermont. It was supported by the superintendent's office. But what now? I have nothing against Hardwick, and I firmly believe that Lakeview Union School is key to the present and future viability of Greensboro, including the Bend. Other planning projects depend on it, including a VCRD community visit, the town plan, and the Bend revitalization initiative. I am quite familiar with the challenges faced by many Lakeview students and their families. It would not be safe to have other than, than an on-site, appropriately experienced principal. This is not about money or shouldn't be. It's not about politics or shouldn't be. It's about children, young families, and our future. Greensboro has the good fortune to enjoy some rich connections that could benefit the entire district, but which need a start in a small school. Please don't turn down considering these options. I can only speak for myself. I'm not sure if I will choose to stay in Greensboro long term if I do not have young children in my life. Unfortunately, access is an issue for me. I have empathy for young parents who might want work here and who want a community school. At 68 and a half, I feel the same way. And this was from Trish Alley in Greensboro. And it will we'll go it. to the record. Thank you. Okay, so, um, so I, go ahead. Just, uh, I just want you, I don't know you want to hear from them, but I do have the three principals are here from the three schools. Okay. Um, so it's, whether it's now or during your discussion at some point since they actually are employed by each of the right. districts. So, so has everybody that. had a chance on the board to look at the proposal that was in the folder? Partially. I was waiting on a presentation. Okay. So what do you all want to have happen regarding the proposal in this discussion? Oh, Would you like to hear from the principals now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So do you guys want to talk to us about this and your thoughts about it. Yeah, that would be great. Um, Excuse 
my back to the <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So I'm aware of where else to begin. I guess I can start, and I really want to feel for the YouTube's well. We've had a lot of discussions with this ourselves. And I think uh, there's something that we all agree on pretty strongly, and that is that there really needs to be an administrative presence in each of the buildings. Things happen at all schools, no matter the size, throughout the day that really you know, requires a, a person that's there to that knows the community, knows the kids, and be able to respond, and has some authority to do that. So that's one thing I believe we all can thank you, Maria. And I was hoping when this all started, I know that Amy, Eric, and I would have made a great team you know, there and put a great things together. Um, my concern became now being so late in the season here, and when Lakeview candidate you know, tur turned into position, I'm looking at the candidate pool for actual like, licensed principals and saying, wow, you know. Um, if we found an Eric and Amy out there, I would say hire them tonight. You know, absolutely. But, but I, I don't. I just worry that if they're not out there, if the search committees, I don't want the search committees to go out and and kind of settle for who happens to be there, as opposed to a skilled individual, a skilled educator, individual, professional that could really add to uh, what we're doing here. And we have a lot of work to do. So for me, at this point, it would be more, you know, who are the who are the, the team members, not necessarily what what we call them whether they're the principals or some other administrative structure, um, I, you know, to maybe cast a wider net and perhaps pull in um, you know, people that may be interested other than the principal position. So that's my starting there, and I'd love to hear from you guys. I would just like to say that we started this conversation way back in the fall in terms of what our, in, in looking at this merger as an opportunity, and uh, trying to keep a real positive lens to it, knowing that there were going to be challenges that we would be faced with. And so immediately we started brainstorming, would our goals stay the same, even though we're all called principals in our buildings? And we saw some fluidity that was going to need to happen in order to make it successful. I have strengths in certain areas and I have weaknesses in certain areas. And we thought we could kind of balance each other better offering a more um, appropriate education for all kids across the merge district. And so I, I just wanted you to know that this conversation has been happening since last fall. And since then people, you know, we two of us have decided to move on I, I still believe that strongly we should look at, it doesn't matter what the position is called to me, as long as the needs of each building are being met, and the immediate needs in particular. There's day-to-day the -day operations that can kind of happen, and there's not a necessary immediacy to it, but then there are day, other days when someone's got to be there, and someone has to be able to make a decision, and somebody has to be able to act appropriately. And so I would just want you to, I think that we can, we can think creatively about this. Um, I'm very concerned about the candidate pool as well, and I don't want you to settle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think that we can assign roles and redesign this a bit and um, better meet the needs of each building and, and the needs of the kids itself. So I would ask you to keep an open mindset and not get stuck on the word principle. So my, my contribution to this model is kind of looking at, at this, this, trans, this transition, I believe, where we're moving from a very standard building-based model. Three separate buildings within an SU, but are clearly our role is very building-based and community-based. Under this new model, whoever you have as a leader will be in a hybrid, where some of their allegiance and some of their tasks will be across three campuses. Right? Because we're all, they will be not just, I don't want you to consider some kind of triumvirate. It really has to be, there are going to be three administrators serving both the needs of the individual campuses plus this greater district. That does bring some really unique um, adventures and some opportunities, but I'm concerned about the trap of where you're going to hire someone who thinks that they have certain responsibilities and they're going to be pulled constantly to look at three communities. And what makes this stuff work is knowing having one person who understands that community, who is the face of that community, and someone that people can come to to talk about the needs of that community. As much as these towns have been merged to their school, you have not been merged in your government. 
You have not been merged in your electorate. You have not been merged in your town budgets. You all retain a unique identity. And if I think of all the ideas that I've heard tonight, Rose, I find myself most allied to what your concerns are, is that these models are great, but they need time to kind of take root and plan. And if we jump too far ahead, then that hybrid model is already built in to create some tensions that are going to make it really, really difficult, no matter who you hire, to understand what their role is going to be. So what I really felt important was to delineate what parts of the job are very campus specific. Who is signing checks? Who is signing bills? Who is approving a teacher's purchase of 20 thermometers when the ones that she thought she had got frozen in the shed and they no longer work? Those kind of things. Who is making those decisions? Is that a campus-based person or is that some head principal in another community? Same district, but another community, another school. Those kind of very specific things, I think, are where, you, where the traps lie for you. The great ideas are wonderful, but the day-to-day -day operations within these campuses, until they're well thought out, and I, I don't have the answers to that, I don't think any of us do. Because we've got to kind of play that by ear to see how that's going to work. So. So, Amy, I had a question for you. Um, how would you address the concerns that Patrick Flood um, brought up about moving forward too quickly in terms of this, like, to your specific community because you know them. How would you, what would you say to them, I guess, if you're supporting this? Like, what's your feeling about that, hearing that? Well, I think change is hard. And, mm -hmm. and we're undergoing change no matter what. Just this new structure has changed. And that's, you know, I think we're, we're moving. We're also having conversations in our individual schools about change, right? School doesn't look the same today mm -hmm. as it even looked five years ago, quite frankly. It's evolving pretty quickly. And I think that we have to address some of our change in terms of we have to evolve with the way education is changing rapidly already. We can't, we can't be stalled by a, a slow pace and by the time we get to two years down the line, there's gonna be another whole set of criteria that really we should be thinking about. So I would caution us to go too slow, mm -hmm. but, at, but also be mindful and, and smart about the decisions that we, we wanna stand firm on. So I think there's <coughs> a lot of communication with the communities about our thinking, our motivations. I think we have to be careful about <coughs> setting up um, a mindset that we, that we need to be collective, that we need to make sure that we're collective in our thoughts and that we are sending the same message to all the communities, not just to the, I mean, all the taxpayers of each community pass the budgets mm -hmm. right. with an expectation, right? Well, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's moving. The, the, the ship is moving and we still have got to evolve around this. And so I would just say, let's be transparent about this and say, you know what, we're in a situation that we have to address change. And these are some of the first steps that we're going to move forward with. And we're always going to keep, I hope, we're always going to keep kids at the center. Mm -hmm. um, I was listening to the uh, community and I was listening to you. And what I think I hear is kind of a conflict in itself. Everybody knows three weeks ago we were at a different spot even than we are at today. You know, we all had expectations of what the next school year was going to look like. And that's all changed. Um, what I'm hearing is caution, think about the ramifications, but I also am hearing that A, we need some sort of administration in the school, and B, we only have 60 days. That within itself is the conflict, and I am... I think you're gonna have limited um, people available with a principal licensure that's gonna apply for these positions. I would hate for us to be so restricted that we're going to limit the pool. And I would just ask that you be a little more open right. so maybe the pool can widen to maybe some 
potential as leader, you know, administrators, or to build people up. It's just, I'm really concerned about the small pool and us settling because we feel desperate to have a principal in every building. Right, and even widening the pool, um, having a different role, it's still going to be tough. It you is. know, it's not, we're not guaranteeing that, that somebody will apply that so I'm going to be a perfect fit and be able to carry this year forward. But uh, I think it just, just knowing what happens summers moving forward, hiring this time of year, you can get very lucky or it can be, we can be sitting here in August with in-service approaching and, you know, trying to figure out what we're going to do to manage the buildings, um, either with Mary or with you. So, one of the things the community was talking about was community involvement. But you've got a 60-day time frame, it's a very short time frame. How do you foresee trying to bring the separate communities into this discussion in such a short period of time? And that, that is the question of the hour. <laughs> I don't do that. I don't have an answer to that because I, don't, I, I'm, I know the hardware community, but I know your community. question, you know, you also mentioned in terms of widening the pool, um, yes, okay, so if we don't have to require a principal licensure, we widen the pool, but you also mentioned, you know, it's hard to find people with the skills, like how do we know these candidates that, you know, how do we know, know that they're going to be able to bring to bear, you know, the level of, of experience and, um, you know, just knowledge that's necessary to really still basically function as an administrator in, uh, on the campus. Um, one piece, I think if we, if we were to go that route of hiring um, another administrative position that wasn't a principal position, one option that, that I know a lot of schools do is that they, they will bring the person on board and get them the what's called the provisional license. So the provisional license then would be, have, give them the, respond, the, the authority of a, an administrator, of a, of a principal under uh, state licensure, then they have two years to complete any requirements or things that they need in order to get their permanent license in. Um, and sometimes that'll attract folks that are like, you know, I really, I really have been teaching, I've been involved in education in different ways, and I really kind of want to do more. I want to get beyond what I've been doing in the classroom and try to have a bigger impact across the whole system. And, and they, they might come, you know, I'm dreaming, of course, but we have to dream, right? Otherwise, I don't think any of us would be here and have hope. But, uh, but I think that, that maybe some great educator out there that's, that's in a reasonable community to us would see this as a great opportunity to get involved without having to become the principal of the school, which can be daunting for folks. So, does that question? So, I'm hearing, just like Pam, I'm hearing that there's um, a fear of if we go with an alternative title position um, that's unfamiliar to the public. Do you three feel that, I'm assuming you guys have seen the models, um, do you feel that all of these models would do what you guys do, but also um, fulfill the expectation that the communities have, even without the rubber stamp of principle? Well, there's one, one risk, I think, that, uh, that comes up when you have this type of alternative structure is that um, family members and community members that have an issue at the local school will want to go right over the, the person that's in the building and go to the real principal or whatever. So I think that if we do go down a path such as this, uh, you know, things that have to be pretty well defined from the community that the, the person there has the authority and um, these otherwise, yeah, that, that, would, that, that would be challenging. And really the board is the one that kind of, you know, holds that responsibility for supervising the administrators and the superintendent. That, that would be a risk that I would see. I have a question sort of going off of this conversation is, um, so I'm still having trouble trying to understand how this differs from the regular principal position. And so what is the distinction between this new model? I mean, I understand there's some fluidity, but really what is your vision in terms of this new model? Um, and how does it better meet the needs of our kids? I heard that somewhere. so just. I don't think we've reached an idea of a vision per se. I think what we recognize, the three of us, was that with these three merged school districts now becoming one, that our role was going to change regardless. That we would now move from a building community-based approach to administration and we would have other responsibilities across all of the communities. 
So we, what we were working on was the gift of time, that we would retain the principal role and title, gradually figure out what, we, what was that going to look like. And I think this is an opportunity at one point to kind of get a head start on that and kind of create that and fill the position. But again, I go back to a concern I have is the trap, which is if you make it too vague and too unknown to folks, that you still you might turn away some people for a principal, but you also might turn away some people who see program director or coordinator and they don't know what that means right. and they're not quite sure you know, what is, what am I doing? Am I doing workshops for teachers across the district? Or am I just supervising those people in my work? It almost seems like it's like, you are, it's a principal position plus some now, you know, because it's like you have the principal administrative duties, but then there's this also expectation of leading some charge across right. the SMU. Right, so right. And that, that's, that's, yeah. I'm struggling to see how it seems less strong to someone, you know, to looking at, from looking at this as a job candidate to say, to given this the trap as you're putting it you know to me as a job you know candidate i would be concerned about the the vagueness and the fact that yes. i'm going to be administ responsible for administration in a building and some set of uh, responsibilities beyond that as well mm -hmm. um, you know just it's a, it's a concern i can answer that somewhat and, and it would be well you know i would see that in that role though you would have the support of the team so you wouldn't be dangling out there alone in a in a school, like hoping that the superintendent has time for a phone call that day. Which they always do. Joanne, but you would have a, a, a licensed experience principal, you know, ten minutes down the road, and also another administrator that's in that school another ten minutes down the road. So, so that that would just be the one piece. Of it. And and the other thing is, it's really like twenty. You know, from it's you know, it's like twenty between. You know what I mean? It's, it's a little further than that. Yeah. You know, you know, and it's and. and I don't know. That was one of my when I was trying to get my head around the idea of even um, share. I, I couldn't get the idea of the LSC it had to be in each building at all times because it's and, just and that's why it doesn't work well for the person to not be here because having to commute back and forth is an issue. Which would eat up the day in two yeah. seconds. Yeah, and, and I've got teachers at Lakeview, and I'm sure there's some at Woodbury who have the longevity enough to remember when there was one principal shared sure. between both buildings. And we're are very, very fearful that that will happen again because it didn't work out when times were easier and it certainly would not be safe now. I mean, they're, they're very worried about that scenario. Okay. Sorry, between which two buildings was that? Lake there was a shared principal between Lakeview and Lake Lake. Okay, Luke. Yeah, um, in terms of the candidate pool, and I know this is kind of basically asking to look into a crystal ball, um, <laughs> but I'm going to ask it anyway. So, do you do you feel like we would get more candidates by changing the title of the position, or would we basically be looking at the same candidates with without the title of principal? It's a great question, especially you know most educators that are in public schools working now are already under contract. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a concern all around um, at this point. So, so that is the that, that's unknown. We might, we might not. We might have nothing. You know, yeah, absolutely. I think the hope would be that you would pull some people who might want to leave the classroom, right? Um, but don't particularly want the principal life, but might want to get it. Our thought is get get a handle on administration, program development, program design without the day-to-day -day pressures of what they see happening with the principal. But how would they not would have that, that right? That's, yeah. Yeah, that's my concern. <laughs> right. okay. Can I just ask you, if you're in a building, if you're in a building, even though Independent. your job may say you're doing professional development yeah. for teachers across the district. And then do you attract you the people who can do the boots on the ground work that's necessary day-to-day, -day, or you attract somebody who's really more interested in the administrative and program development piece, and they don't have the strengths to bring to, to bear in the, in the building. You know, that would be my... And just one very other short follow-up. What's the timeline for someone to get that provincial principal's license? The superintendent joins, the superintendent applies, and it takes... Right. What? And then it has to go through the AOE to determine if they meet the criteria for it varies. Three months? <laughs> Ten months. It could be a month. A month. <laughs> and, then, and then right now, with this is the busiest time of year for the AOE with the number of people getting the renewals for their license. So it takes them much longer to respond 
to people during this time period? Kevin? Um, I'm personally torn at this point, uh, generally speaking, between uh, the model that was approved, very uh, specifically approved by the budget group prior to the forming of this particular um, uh, board. Uh, we all felt it was very important uh, for the first year to be a learning experience for all three uh, organizations. With that said, I very much understand and appreciate the concern for the applicant pool. So I have more, it's not a technical question, I guess it's about a foreseeable technical limitation in the school spring system. That's how we advertise for this position, correct? Are we extending beyond the school spring system? We can. So the reason I ask, the reason I ask is you can broaden an applicant pool fairly readily by changing job descriptions, but you don't necessarily have to hold down the title. The title of that position can be a to be determined title so you wait and see what that applicant pool <coughs> looks like and then you structure based off of what you have in your hand at that point i can't do that because we have to identify the category that we're posting for we so that that's my question so is the category specific based off of job title yes there are specific categories we have to click on in order to put that into to actually get posted so can you Let's say put it in as a principal title, uh, pr categorize it as principal, and then further it, describe what the search committee is truly looking for in the description of that job. Yeah, I think I can put a different title, and I'm going to have to click category principal, but um, I think we can call, we can come up with a different name uh, as the uh, title of the position, but I will have to choose that. So, just to follow up, uh, um, we're budgeted for three full-time administrators, principal administrators in each school. It's easy to work backwards from that, uh, budget-wise. It, it's not necessarily easy to fix the community engagement part if we change that model uh, after we've already approved it multiple times in public setting, on the record, and confirmed that we are not touching the structure for the first year. Now, obviously, if our hands are forced based off of the applicant pool, that's a different conversation to be had. But my initial thoughts, at least given the information I have at this point, is um, I am adamantly opposed to high, hiring mediocrity, period. Um, I, it, it's just a, an unacceptable thing to me uh, to hire mediocrity. Um, so what can we do in order to expand the applicant pool to get the biggest pool that we possibly can and then make the decision based off of what's in front of us at that point in time. So I, I don't necessarily disagree. I understand the concept um, that somebody will be physically present in the building, able to handle a crisis as it emerges. Um, but this is more about perception, and titles matter at that point with perception. Um, so as Patrick alluded to a few moments ago, if an, uh, a concerned parent, concerned member of the public is walking into this building looking for a principal, period, that's who they're looking for. They're not stopping. They're not talking to the building administrator at that point in time. Uh, they're heading down to potentially harder, where the only licensed and employed uh, principal would be at that point in time, potentially. Um, so it's about perception, and it's about uh, a good faith uh, effort to make sure that we uh, um, maintain what the, the various uh, budget committees and uh, other um, boards have asked for this first year, which is status quo, uh, figure out what it looks like. say that I feel like my head's rolling there's a lot of thoughts but one of the things I'm thinking is that 
um, when we chose the new superintendent, when we chose some of the people were there at that <laughs> at that choice um, at that meeting or that what do you call it interview. Um, when we chose the new superintendent, I think it was really clear to me, and I think it was really clear to the group that he was um, saying, "I'm here to guide you and to help you, but the vision about where we're going comes from you. I mean, it comes from the community, it comes from the school boards, it comes from the parents, it comes from the kids, it comes from the teachers and the administration." Um, and he was really like all about vision. Like you guys need to figure out where you're going and what you want, mm -hmm. and I'm happy to help you get there. What I feel like um, in I'm hearing in this discussion is that we don't have the vision yet. I mean, I think we're working on it, but there's a lot of community input yet to happen. And by community, I'm just thinking teachers, students, um, parents, community members, and I. I think it's really important that we have um, a real vision before we say um, tonight at this table that we envisioned where we're going tonight in this quick discussion. Um, I, I think vision is exciting and I, I think that, that these models allow for some really creative stuff that we could do together. Um, but and, and I'm somebody who likes to jump in. I, th I think there's a lot of cool stuff we could do, but I feel like we really need to have some community engagement um, before we say, here's the vision, this person's role is to lead us there. If we don't yet know what those positions, what they're trying to do, besides um, make it better for students in this sort of vague way. I just, that's, that's my voice. I think um, I, I want to see the community engage and I want to support the people who, who, are, who voted to have us here, but I think it's really important um, before we change these titles and say, now it's a director, I think we're going to have people say, when did that get decided? What's happening? What's the vision? Who, who decided that? Um, and I think, frankly, I don't want people to feel like this came down from central office and that people feel like, oh, this is a mandate from the state or this is a mandate from central office and we didn't get to buy into it or make it, not even buy into it, to create it. Sure. So, off that thing, I would just, have any of you looked at the superintendent's transition plan in the OSUC quarter? So, I read this, so Adam had Joanne put this in there. This is Adam's document. So I read this and then I called Adam to talk about this model and what he thought about this and how it fit, how I envisioned the model fitting into this transition plan to make sure that I was thinking about this correctly. Um, Adam is excited about the opportunity that this model presents um, to the flexibility. Uh, as well as where the system could possibly go from here is the launching point for this new Newton Elementary District. Um, so in here, there's, there's many points that reflect around how this model ties back to this uh, document that Adam's put together. It talks about authentic uh, making learning relevant by assessing and applying real-life context, student-driven, choosing their own parents, choose access and demonstrate evidence learning. These go back to those director models, which are chosen for very specific reasons, because these directors will be leading initiatives that you have all, the Woodbury Board and the Lakeview Board, have been pushing, and the Harvard Board have been talking about outdoor education. You know, what we're going to be dealing with over this next year and beyond is equity. Um, these are big, huge initiatives that we need somebody focused on. Uh, so this campus in particular, outdoor education, the wetlands here, there's been a lot of time and effort developed or put into the wetlands out here. There's grants that have been talking about here. To have somebody in this building that's not only focused on building administration here, but also developing the outdoor education curriculum to help you know, bolster Woodbury as far as keeping it solid long term, this campus long term, 
being able to partner with bringing the kids down from Harvard, bringing kids from Lakeview down here to access the wetlands. That's a huge bonus to kids across this district. Uh, so Adam's excited about those opportunities. Uh, he also talks about exploring means for increasing in-house instructional coaching opportunities, which you see these directors leading that initiative. Um, discuss what it means to be a lead learner, which you can expect these the principal and these directors to be lead learners within this uh, Union Elementary District. So there's many opportunities in, or many points in this document that tie directly back into this model. Um, and she's absolutely excited about the possibilities. Which of the four models? Can you can you hold on just one second because Kevin wants to ask um, the John and then I'll get to you. How does title change any of that? Okay. How does title change any of the intent at that point? Whether it's the position is called a principal, an assistant principal, a vice principal, a director, it's about the people in the position at that point. Yeah, the, the, the whole thing's around here. You can call them whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Titles are titles. But when you give somebody the, the name principal, there's an expectation that they're in here doing the administration work that's in this building. Whereas if we have people that are living directors, they're not necessarily doing, they're not going to be doing the evaluations of the, of the professional staff here. They don't have the credentials. To, they might not have the credentials to do that. Mm -hmm. They may be doing observations with Pat, but Pat will end up being the one to do the evaluation of the staff, of the professional staff. They can do evaluations on the sports staff, but they can't do it on the professional staff. So there are things that trade off. So that's with licensure, that's not position title. Right. right. So that's what we expect, is we're not necessarily having to go get somebody with a principal's endorsement. Mm -hmm. That was the whole crux of this going with a director's model, is you can widen the pool by not having to go get somebody with a principal's endorsement. So, go ahead, sorry, sorry. if we can widen the pool and we don't find a principal, that makes sense. If we can widen the pool and we do find somebody with either a principal principal uh, license uh, or somebody who wants a provisional license, does that still change any of the direction of the school? I honestly think it will because if you have a principal that's focused, principal focused on the, you're going to get three silos again. But, but I, I'm trying to play devil's advocate a little bit here. Mm -hmm. um, so the principal takes their direction from who? The superintendent. And the superintendent's intent is to do what? To create a collaborative process across all yes. three campuses. Yes. So regardless of title, that position is still going to take direction from a different entity, whether that is Patrick specifically right. or but the superintendent. Model, they're still going to move that direction. At, well, we're the looking, at, looking at redefining that position completely. Mm -hmm. and that director would have bigger chunks of their time that would allow them freedom to focus on program development and on um, the equity piece. There would be chunks of time that these principals right now if you ask any one of these three, they don't have a lot of time to be creative. They're bogged down in all the, what Patrick calls all the administrative work, mm -hmm. all the bureaucratic work that the principal has to handle. Right, so here I have one big question, which I, maybe one of you guys could answer. If, if Patrick is the only person who's familiar with this district, and all of a sudden he's going to get all the administrative principal stuff dumped on him, how is he going to lead the two directors? Like, how is that going to realistically happen if all of the observations across three schools now have to be done by not, one person? Not all the observations have to be done by him. You said all the evaluations. Evaluations. Sorry, evaluations. Yes. But still, like, I mean, that's that's taking something there's, that three okay, people... So there's so, ten more evaluations for professionals. Right, I understand. But, I, but I want to know, if you guys have three full-time jobs and we're going to take two of them and change them such that they get to focus on this other stuff... The duties don't go away. How... What happens with all the stuff that you guys have done that now, I mean, how are you going to handle that in your, in you, and also handle leading these two people who don't, I mean, I think it's important to say that, like, regardless of what we call this, we're looking for somebody to run a school in July. And that's not, that's going to limit what we're going to get, which also means that this could be a great model that falls flat on its face because we don't get good applicants. And that's a huge fear that I have. I don't want to roll something out and be like, I think this could totally help and have it not help at all because 
we got some, we had a choice between not great applicants. So can I play devil's eye for you? Sure. So I would get you to don't roll this out and you get no app, no viable candidates for principal and you're sitting here in August and you have one administrator and two empty seats. What do you do? Continue the search process. I mean, I that, mean that, that's... Quite literally, that, that, that's, that's my answer. How long do you continue that before Patrick says, I can't do this anymore? What do you do if you change it and that still happens? I mean, that's the thing. That's well, a risk anyway. I, I also just keep thinking, roll what out? Like, we got this piece of paper. I didn't even see it till I sat down there at 545, meeting with the Lakeview board, 530. At the Lakeview board, I hadn't checked my email this afternoon, so I got it 15 minutes before this meeting. I, I, there's some things in there in my quick glance of it that I know we've talked about at Lakeview. There's things I've heard in the community, but I certainly don't feel I can roll it out. I don't know what what we're rolling out at this point. Um, if a community member came up to me and asked, what are we rolling out? I, I couldn't. <laughs> I honestly couldn't say. I, I don't know. And obviously Adam has had a chance to look at it before we did, if he's responding to it, he's had a chance to say, here's my thoughts on it. But, but in any event, it's very new. Um, I'm excited, I have two feelings. One is that I don't know what it is yet. Two is I'm excited because I do think we need to get visionary. Mm -hmm. But a vision takes some, I just want to say input, input and time to come together and I'd love to see us get to do that so that we can, when people in the community come to us and say, so what's this new director position? I could say, oh, it's really cool. Here's how it's going to work. I'd love to be able to say that. I, I couldn't say that after this meeting. I think I'd love to be able to, to say I understood it fully and got on board with it. But I, I, don't, I don't know what it is yet. So Yeah, just a, a couple quick comments. Um, I definitely appreciate the sentiments about not feeling fear during this time. And I think we need to look at this with courage and we need to look at it with the intent of the students across the entire district with, with them in mind, across all three campuses. That being said, when we're looking at the arrangement of the administration, it feels like we're putting the cart before the horse because we don't have a clear vision of what that looks like. We have the best intentions. That's we absolutely have the best intentions, but we do not have clear vision right now. So, I think it's very difficult to say that we're going to put this administration model in place without that vision, where we know we, we by going to that three principal model. I I think we know kind of what we're signing up for. We know what we're getting. But I think we also have to be very transparent with the candidates that one of the expectations of this role is going to be to help drive, you know, the initiative and help merge these administrations. So Kim, I, I'm sorry, Kim has stuff you want to. I, I know yeah. we want to try to have, but I want to let everybody speak too. So, um, did you have more you wanted to say? Or I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, Kim. Um, what I'm hearing from the board is vision and I, I I agree you know we need a vision okay and I but what I'm hearing at at the same time is vision takes time time we don't have so what what I'm, I'm hearing you guys express but you're not giving me any help on how you're gonna do that in 60 days you know it's I understand Woodbury wants to be outdoors. They got the wetlands. I thought I understood Greensboro was more into the arts type of setup. I could be wrong because I'm not that familiar with them. So we kind of know where certain campuses wants to go. But do we want to hire somebody just to throw them into position for maybe a year who doesn't know the community, doesn't know the students, doesn't know the possibly the OSSU, just to have a body there? No. 
that's a total waste of effort, money, and time. You know, we need to do something and we need to do it within 60 days. Whether we call it one principal, two directors, one principal, two assistants, whatever, you know. I don't see how we're going to get the community involved in 60 days. I don't know how we're going to get the job description hammered out. And I certainly don't know how we're going to do a vision in 60 days. So, um, is everybody okay if I get a couple comments from the audience? Yeah. So, yeah. public comment, let's keep it 10 minutes. Go ahead. I don't understand the role of the OSSU at this meeting. It seems like it's a sales pitch that you're, you have an agenda that you're driving and they're asking questions and you're correcting them. Is What is your no, role in this? I'm communicating what our new the communication that I have with our new superintendent for starts to my part. And I'm asking what their expectation is of an interim principal. Um, an interim principal by definition is not going to drive an agenda, is not going to move a vision forward. An interim <coughs> principal is a bridge, a placeholder for one year. So that's the message I'm trying to convey to this group. Right, but anybody who took that position with any other name would also have no job security or guarantees and could very well last a year or less anyway. Potentially, or if this, if this is a new type of position, this could be redefined to be a longer term position. It doesn't have to be a new term position. That would be up to this board. Okay, is there any other comment from the public or questions that you have specifically about this, Patrick? I think I want to say two things. Um, based on the conversation, I think it's perfectly feasible that you could create a different kind of position that would still serve the school and the students well in a three-party model. But you, you could do it. I think it could make a lot of sense. Uh, and you would have a larger pool to draw from than trying to find a principal. But what that means is you've got a lot of work to do in a very short period of time because you have to define that job so that the right people will apply for it. Do I think there are educators out there who would like an opportunity to work in a creative environment, create a new job in, in, in a school district that's forming and thinking about doing things different? Sure there are. There are definitely educators who would be willing to do that. But you've got to define that really, really quickly and get it out there and find those people. So I'm personally not opposed to that. And I think if you find the right people and you, and you really think through how the relationship would work between the remaining principal and these other two people and what their job responsibilities would be. I mean, theoretically, you could do it. But you've got to get to work. And you really got to do it for a bit. And you've got to have a clear idea of what what you want them to do, what authorities they have, or people simply won't fly, right? The other thing I would like to say is, I understand the position you're in, but, and you're not gonna get a lot of public engagement, especially as the summer approaches, right? We all know that. But you have got to communicate to the public that this is what's happening. And that means writing a letter from you or from the supervisor union to every household in the new unified district and explaining to them what is happening and what you intend to do about it and then you need to send one every two weeks because it, people may not read it but at least they have an opportunity and, and that you inform them every step of the way you, you got to do this work or, or, or people will not support what you're doing and September will come and parents will walk in the building or Parents are walking the building with the principal and those are what I and 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 I'm what I'm afraid of is that the people in towns like Woodbury are going to get completely turned off by the whole process because things were happening, they had no idea, nobody told them, they weren't involved, there were big changes. That is going to really ruin or, or certainly set the stage for a very bad start to all of this and make your jobs wickedly difficult going forward. So those are the two things. If you can define that new job quickly and be confident that it's going to meet the need and 
get that word out there, you can probably attract some pretty interesting candidates. And you've got to communicate to the public. You have to do it. You, you cannot over communicate. There's no such thing. You've got to do it. So, Thank you. Very quick question. Yeah. Which of the options are you talking about when you're um, when you're saying what you're hoping that the board will do? Is that option two in particular? With the principal and two directors. Yeah, model two. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, I'm going to close public comments so we can continue. Can I just ask a quick yeah, of course. question? Yeah, of course. I think we were just talking about it a little bit, but if that in um, if we have two director positions at the at Woodbury and Lakeview, and, there, and Patrick is the principal at Hardwick, and those two principals are not certified to do certain things, um, say, like uh, disciplinary things, do, is that gonna mean that there needs to be an, another position hired to take on some of the stuff that that person can't take on, or does it go to Patrick? I guess I'm trying to figure out, like, are we creating more Positions that have to be filled to make sure all that the all the bases I, get covered. I, I feel think that came down, if, there, if you have a person in the building that is managing the day-to-day -day behavioral events that are going to occur, um, there's only certain pieces that they would consult with the principal on if they didn't have the principal messenger, and that that would be suspensions and those sorts of things. Because like so. it, it seems to me that that is a big piece of the yeah. job, at least right now, is the day-to-day -day behavioral piece. stuff is enormous. Right. Right. It's also about getting ahead of, if we keep doing things the same way we're doing it, we need that it's always going to be a bigger, bigger part of the jobs. Right. And, and I think that we all are interested in a lot of the same things. Like our sixth grade was down at Puck Lake for two days this spring for an event. It was like, you know, I, 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 if you had this kind of model, the likelihood that Lakeview and Woodbury kids would have been with them down at Puck Lake greatly expanded. You know, a lot right. of the things that we do all in our schools, getting kids out and perhaps, hopefully, do some of those discipline needs. Absolutely. So to Rose's question, I guess, what would be able to be taken off of a plate of a director position because we're saying right now you don't have the time for this great stuff, but some you know, some stuff would be able to be pulled off because they're not technically the principal. So, and we heard um, I heard one thing which is super vision of professional staff, which is small because you're not so that's one piece, but what else, like what else is taken off to make room for this other stuff? Does that make sense in the question? Or do you guys like that? Well, I think we thought it's through some, but this is new to us as well, mm -hmm. so yeah. we'll have the details when we have it But I look at, for example, coming up for our uh, ed camp, the training at the end of the year, uh, Hardware is, is about to do a math program called Bridges that we use. Um, and we invited the Woodbury and Lakeview staff to come and join us at the training that's occurring. We have several teachers that are going to be coming. So I think some of that kind of professional development pieces and, um, and other, other things along those lines could be done collectively instead of each principal having to decide what are we going to do in our building? What are we going to do in our building? And even if you look at the, the initiatives around outdoor education and sustainability and, and the arts, um, versus each principal having to come up with visions and planning and talk with everyone and wow, you know, it could be a, you know, why don't you take on um, the, the, the visual arts project that you want to do up at the, um, up at the Greensboro Center. So those sorts of things would be potentially to classroom observations that could be done by anyone. So, um, the actual final evaluations could be done. Okay, so, um, So I guess, what is, is there anything on the table, um, I guess Phoebe or Kim, is there anything on the table in terms of Woodbury as far as they haven't, there's been a, a, a position posted for Woodbury? No. Has it was it, the position is posted for, ago, Was it for today. interim principal? Yes. It was for interim principal. Okay. Has it actually been posted? It has been posted, yeah. Um, and have you guys formed a committee already? Did I miss no. that? No. Because no. that's our. Is that we're doing that? Okay. So, 
the idea behind having directors instead of principals, and I'm just trying to do a quick overview, is to widen the pool because all three principals have expressed that there is concern about realistically finding two people who would be able to, I mean, I think that in an interim principal, I don't think we're going to find a visionary. So I think that that's important. Personally, for me, I feel like an interim principal in this is going to not really help with the concept of being able to create a vision. Because I, I don't have enough information about the other two schools to feel like you're ma like making an appropriate, and I and while I appreciate and, and think that the communities of those schools are really well involved, it's a different. They have different information than a principal would. So having an interim principal at the two small schools really concerns me, because I feel like we would just have to kind of like have a vision, but not be able to move forward with any of it. Um, I completely hear the concerns about. A, putting in a director, changing the title in terms of the community vision or the community perception of it. Um, but balancing that with like, what kind of applicants are we gonna get? I mean, I would almost rather hire just principals instead of interim ones, but I, I know that would probably be an even smaller pool. I don't know. So I, yes. A really quick question. Does a director have a bachelor's, a master's, a PhD? Is there, like, if, they do, if that person doesn't need to have a principal's certification, where do, what do you decide for qualifications? Just uh, like a practical question. I think we get to decide that we in, the, in the job that? description. Yeah. You want them to, to have the potential to get the administrative certification. Right. Which was licensed to have a master's and a master's. And yeah. have but if, if that person is not working for the principalship, if that person is purely a director, he or she could have a bachelor's. Bachelor's and master's, please. Right. I, I just, it occurred to me that it changes the, the requirement, right? Right. So I have a thought for you. Um, so I understand, <clears throat> so there's another way to look at this a little bit. You could, just so that we can get through the principal director discussion, um, you could call it the principal of programming, development, and whatever, at least that language that's there, so that it's clear that we're looking for somebody with that kind of background. But in the qualification section, it could be uh, principal's endorsement preferred but not necessary. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to help kind of frame this a little differently because I'd like, I think we need to get off the dime here and do something. Because we've got nothing, Lakeview's pulled theirs, Woodbury's got something running, whether we continue or not. Um, so I'm just trying to capture everybody's concerns a little bit. I mean, I think we can, the title isn't the issue, it's the responsibilities mm -hmm. that fall underneath. And having the creative ability to do the things you want to have done. So you can write a job description that outlines all the things that we just that's in that document, which is really everything you guys have talked about mm -hmm. for the last five years. And just identify those are the things we're looking for somebody to be able to do on this in this campus. <coughs> but also that it's a shared um, leadership model, basically, that there may be they may be um, supervised by someone else. Okay, so it could it could reframe it in a way that captures the concerns people have that there is an administrator. These are kind of the duties and responsibility. I want to make it. Up. I think the issue is trying to make it catchy enough so that people don't feel like they're caught in a principal mm -hmm. job if that's not really what they want. So we could. We can frame it in a way, we'll frame it in a way, but preferably with like somebody with a principal's endorsement, but not necessary. Preferably somebody with a bachelor's, master's degree in one of these fields, education, human services, um, anything like that that can help us accomplish the goals. It could be anybody that's been dealing with mental health, it could be anybody, anybody who has a background. 
background that could move forward the agenda for the programming that you want. So I think we can design it. If you're going to move in the direction of not interim but principal, one of the things the Transport Petition Board decided that the existing principals was one year only. This is a one year only position. If you, so that is one other possibility. If you go with the more creative thing, you don't have to make that a one year thing if you want to. If you like where that's going, you can say it's one year for now, but that doing it in a more creative approach doesn't mean that you're staying one year, which is more enticing for people to stay, be committed, and do the work for your communities. So there's just some thoughts. Can you create a posting like this? Do you, could you post it in multiple places? Like, is it, can it be under the principal category and also, I mean, it's a very... I can like, try and post it under the variety of things. Well, go ahead. So, that's almost exactly what I was trying to get at a moment ago, which is cast the widest net possible. Don't box ourselves into what particular model we're going for. Let's see what that applicant pool looks like. Mm -hmm. Let's understand what it truly looks like. We might have two phenomenal candidates with a principal's endorsement that want to apply. We might not. In, in, in the interest of time, we need to make a decision, certainly. But to make a hasty decision with little information to no information about the applicant pool at this point, I think is uh, not wise. Um, and uh, casting the net as wide as we can outside of school spring, I think would be an additional benefit. So one yes. other thing just to state, I just want to clarify, when Amy came here, she did not hold a principal's endorsement. She was classified as an instructional leader mm -hmm. and did not have it. We contracted out for somebody else with a principal's license who wasn't here every day. Mm -hmm. She was her mentor and she was the designated principal for the building. So she was on call for me, and she was the one that authorized whether there was a suspension or not. But she was very minimal in her contact. Actually here, Amy was the person on site, did not hold the principal's endorsement. And, you know, and just recently got her principal's endorsement two years ago, basically. So it was a mentoring work in progress, but I just want you to know that it can work. Mm -hmm. So the other piece about that is like for the people in Woodbury that wasn't this big shocker. You know, like my one of the things, one of the concerns that we all share and we're heard express is like if we just start like presenting this maybe like maybe I mean, you know, can we have our cake and eat it too and kind of start this redesign but also reassure everybody that think the way things have run at the schools day to day is not changing. You know, this isn't taking away I think it's just I think it's as much how we present this as, as, like you said, we can bust with the description we want to. And some of that, I think, is, yes, we want to see who those candidates are, but how we write the job description is going to define who those candidates do grab. So I think the job description is important for us to really, even though we don't have the time, to start to really figure out. It's been fleshed out a little bit. Right. And then, but then at the same time, to make sure that how this is communicated and presented is both transparent but also reassuring and not <coughs> dramatically, you know, pulling the rug out from under people like you said, you don't want to come back in, in late August and all of a sudden who's the principal, where's the you know, everything's been I don't know. I'm just trying to see if there's a way that we can meet a middle ground where we can get some flexibility in what the positions can do, but still, like you said, not get hung up on is it a principal or is it a director? What are we calling this person? Okay, so I have one question for the board though. Do we want to hire an interim principal for either school? Are people no, feeling, do we want to hire an interim principal for either school? Is anybody feeling like their community needs to have an interim principal? I'm not talking about a principal, I'm talking about an interim one, one who is hired to know that they are a bridge over to the next year. Is that something that they feel, anybody here feels like their community really needs to have somebody who's just going to kind of hold things? I just, I, I don't Okay. Because I know that my that I know of a, a situation where there's an intern in a school, and that school is at danger of closing every single year. And there's a vote, and, and there was a big push to transform the high school. And mm -hmm. that intern principal has come forward and had a lot of creative, innovative ideas right. about really trying to save that school. And you know, 
know, I think it depends on, again, the candidates, the right, the candidates, right. It's not the term interim principal either, right. you know, But so. I do think that, an in, I mean, I, I guess I would say, like, I, from everything I've understood, and I'm, I have not been in education, in formal education like this, so I don't know everything, but from what I've understood, an interim principal typically is somebody who's just looking for a year to go and be a principal, that they're not necessarily looking to, like, start a big thing or something like this. I, and, and I don't know. I mean, it's true. It depends on who we get. But I do think that the title of interim principal... I thought that that said something to applicants, whereas principal or some iteration of that's not interim is a different thing. But I, but I, I don't know. I mean, for myself, but we've had people apply because they were in retirement, not in retirement for a year. Right. But when I applied at Lakeview, Lakeview was advertised as an interim principal, mm -hmm. which my understanding was I'd like to try it, and I really want be successful, and if it works out for buddy, I would hope for a longer term commitment. Okay. So I, I think people will interpret that differently, depending on how you present as an interview committee and what you're looking for. Okay. Okay. Sam. I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Um, I move that we direct the supervisory union to create a job description that they would post on School Spring or wherever for us to look at. Based on? Based, based on, on what? Based um, on this, this document, with a, with principles or direct, the titles are a big. I mean that yeah. just the description. Just don't the worry description. about the title. Just okay. the description. Okay. So that we could look at it, and they could look at it, and kind of get the wheels moving. Is there a second? Do we have a time frame? I would think we would I need don't think we do. that document. Can you get it done by June 20th, by our next meeting? <laughs> don't have a choice, because you got to get this thing posted soon. Okay, so by June 20th, for our June 20th meeting, for us to consider. June 20th, 19 days. I'll second the motion. Okay. 19, sorry. Um, is there any discussion? Um, who, in, because this is, um, so new in this sort of designing this directorship, in terms of designing the, the ad posting, how would people give input? And just to pick up on what Patrick was saying, like you, really, you need to get the word out and let people know what's happening. If we are changing the model and, it, and creating a new job posting with a, with a different kind of model, how do you solicit input? So, so it's not just like say the OSSU saying this is what the position's gonna look like. But so it's, it's it, I, I just, I, I guess what I'm saying is through this whole process, I'm trying to figure out sort of where the vision is coming from. Is this coming from the OSSU saying this would be a good model for these schools? Is this um, coming from the boards? So I, I think, Joanne, you're saying that these, in, this in some ways is coming from conversations that have had that have been had over the last five years. I'm new to Lakeview in the last year and a half, so I haven't been privy to all those con to, to all of them. I've been privy to some of them. Um, I just think it would be good before the posting goes out to know who's who's putting together the the new vision or the new job description. So I'll just clarify that with the changes of the two individuals here moving on. This was something that started with your transition board, but didn't have time to have a discussion, didn't want to rush into it. You had three seated principals. It would have been a time to have a discussion as you began, but you didn't have time. So the decision again was to wait. You were going to have this discussion coming up in the next four months, to be honest with you, as you built your new budget. What were you going to do? What presented itself is two of your principals have left their positions. So instead, now it's facing you right now. So yes, you could continue with your three principal model. You got moved to interim. So I don't think that there's a vision or an intent here. It's, you know, I looked at, okay, I got two empty seats. I see what's going on. I talked with the principals. We've been talking about this last year because they knew this merger was coming and they're all asking, What's my role going to be? How do we work the three together? 
So it's just a matter of putting all these pieces together. This has been presented as purely a discussion. No one has any intention of this. If you don't want to move with it, it's fine. If you want to move with it, it's, it's okay. I understand the concern. Rose, I'm not trying to be defensive here. I, I see your body language and your concern. I just, I just didn't feel like my question was being answered. How do we give input? Who's going to give input? That's all I was asking. Who's going to give for input the job for description? the job description? That's I'm, the job of I, the, our office to create a job description. Okay, that's all I needed. That's all I was asking. Yeah. Who's putting I mean, I think, that the, I think that what the motion Sam made was to make a job description based on the based on the proposal that was given tonight but leaving the title off of it and that we i don't know would look at it and then decide what we thought for a title or something i mean or i think that the post, post it, it i think that the title thing comes to an issue of the net and how big it is and all that kind of stuff and who we get as a possibility i mean what i voiced concern about is is i appreciate the concept of getting to know each other over the next year but we've been three schools running right next to each other for many years now and so there's a certain amount of like just needing to get in and start working together that i feel like needs to happen and i get concerned that two interim principals may not work that as well as people who are being hired to forward um to forward whatever ends up coming out as the vision of the district for the three campuses move to call the question um, Kevin has called the question. Uh, all in favor of calling the question, say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstentions? Abstain. Okay. You abstain? Okay. Yep. Uh, so uh, we are voting on, let's see, voting yes means asking Joe, the central office to create a job description with no title based on what the proposal that was given to us today for two administrator type people at Woodbury and Lake Lakeview. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Abstentions? Okay, the, uh, the motion carries. Sorry, I forgot that last time. Yeah. Can I, can I ask a question? Yes. process at this point so what are the next steps now that it's been posted for a week I didn't know the timeline I didn't know how the who puts together the screening right so it's out there right so I'm wondering if at this point we need to create a search committee for both positions whatever they end up being because we're going to fill them this board is going to fill them is that appropriate for us to do at this meeting or do you all want to wait until June 20th uh, I just have a quick question yep. The Lakeview board already like had a committee for that interview mm -hmm. process. Do mm -hmm. we contact those people and see if they're still available to be part of this new search? What do you guys want to do? I, I, or do you just start with a clean slate and, and start over? I mean, I don't have an opinion. I'm just I, asking how it works. I, was wondering, I mean, I have questions about it, so that's why I'm going to do that. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I, I th my, my personal feeling would be that for the two, there would be two separate committees I mean that seems insane um, yeah. that seems insane it, to have it, two separate committees but it could be that we have one committee that's made up of Woodbury and Lakeview representatives from this board mm -hmm. and then and then people from the community and teachers from the school mm -hmm. and would that does that sound like that would be okay in Woodbury so if we did that and just the people sitting on, I mean, so, because to have two committees, two separate committees, that's going to be. And then, what, I mean, just, just yeah. trying to talk through this. It's like, fine. So then how do you decide, like, 
I mean, I, I just, I don't know, I'm still well, there. So you can decide which one's a better fit for either district. It could get sticky if you have one great candidate and you both want them for your same school. I get that. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, but this is there, why is, are there a, is there a different focus for each of the campus? Is it, I, I'm just, well, we're going to be advertising more money. It's going to be a job right? description from the superintendent's office for both positions, one description. Oh. So in, it's the way I'm understanding it. So that would limit. Yeah. So it would be a job description for both the director type position and a principal type position, but without the title. I think it would just be a, a job description, description. description for someone to be the lead administrator at the Lakeview campus and the Woodbury campus. I feel campus. like you need to be separate for Lakeview campus and separate for Woodbury yeah, campus. That's well, I think that in, I think that... I think that the one that's published would be different because they're two different schools, communities, etc. But I think that the idea behind them is that they would both be working in this team part to forward the district, the vision of what the district is going to be, which is to be determined, which is tricky. Right, but so it would be a distinct description for that particular campus I, yes. with the note that it's a that with with like the the roles I mean, would be. This is what we're saying is going to be well, well, proposed to us the twentieth. But yes. if we're doing like outdoor, if like let's say this is outdoor education focused and like you is arts focused, let's right. say for the director part, then those are going to be two very different. Right. 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 But yes. That the underlying duties and responsibilities. I mean, would be the same. It's just going to be different specifics. Yeah, and and that sort of to me that was that casts the net if you want to use that again as like even wider because if we're looking for somebody who's passionate about getting an outdoor ed thing across the district going and or the, with the focus in Woodbury but being available for all the students and and you're looking at somebody at, at Lakeview trying to get an arts and performing <laughs> start you know just get those things rolling then you would have potentially those are very different can potentially be very different things so I just want to mention that I think it's a huge step that we're taking without getting the community input. It's a huge, it, it, it's a big difference between an arts director or a outdoor education director and a mm -hmm. principal. Mm -hmm. Now we can say it's somebody sitting and taking up a body for a year. I fully disagree with that. Um, I, I think the value of even an interim principal in each building is going to be huge. And, and you know, like, like Eric mentioned it's the it's a trap it's the devil's in the details and right now we don't have any of those details right I realize that so I so I feel very strongly without that I, community participation I and without mean, bringing this up in a larger form that it's it's a big departure for us to take so Lou we, I being on the Lakeview board we just went through this process and I I have think I have an understanding of what interim means my understanding that is if we put the word interim in between a in before the word principal the people you're going to get are not looking for a long-term position necessarily so the concern i would have is if you say interim principal you get somebody and they're great but they're not willing to stay on like if, if they're fantastic and we want to keep them but they're like nope i was just here for the one year and now i'm going to move on whereas if we don't put that interim word in front we can still hire somebody who might want to be there one year, but there's, oh, there's, it leaves us open to keeping that person longer if we find a fantastic and person. That's the understanding that I've gotten from um, Joanne. <laughs> so, okay, Phoebe and then Joanne. So a few things. Let me see if I can remember them. So um, to your point about putting something, moving ahead with something without getting in, but I agree with that concern, but we're not saying that we're moving forward. We're, as we're on the 20th, just looking at this job description as a written statement to see if we then want to decide to post that and move forward with that to see what how it actually plays out, right? Um, and number two, I'm thinking of um, again the interim piece. You know, I, I feel like there could potentially again be a retired principal who maybe could do another year, and yes, it is short term, but maybe that solid retired principal is. Yep. Way better than having nothing, you know, or somebody that's not 
the right fit, right? And then the third piece is I'm wondering about, you know, so if we're meeting again on the 20th anyway, um, and we've got this, at least for the Woodbury position, has been posted for a week, so next week is the 20th, so that would have been two weeks. Can we somehow open up and see what kind of applicant pool we have received within the two weeks to see where we're at with an interim principal posting that's been out for two weeks at that point? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a way to do that without necessarily getting into the whole hiring process, but to at least be able to see what we've gotten and decide if we want to consider those folks that have applied? So those are a few. I don't see why we, um, Joanne, you wanted to say something? Okay, so we're just going to keep spinning here, um, and it's healthy discussion, so I'm going to make your life a little bit simpler. I think it, we, would, Lake, you already wrote a job description for what the kind of principal they were looking for. Woodbury wrote a job description that posting of what they wanted for a principal, so you already have some ideas of what you're looking for. <coughs> principal positions are one year only unless you dictate long. Mm -hmm. Right now, interim is not a great term to be using. Principal is fine, but I would put principal, learning, instructional leader, whatever, slash instructional leader, something that adds more flavor. I think in the job description, which I think may help get us to where you want to go with this, is there are principal things, but these different positions, you can make them a little bit clearer to expand upon some of these things. So it can be assigning the principal at Lakeview to focus on specific things, the principal at Woodbury to focus on specific <laughs> things that we talked about here. You can do that. You could take out the interim principal, you could, like Lakeview just did, remove it, and start kind of with a fresh slate and say, here's what we're looking for and identify it this way and identify those things and what you're looking for for credentials can be for each position. You have specific themes in each of these positions that you're looking for in a candidate. Those can stay there. But I think the other part is, is that you want to move some things forward. At the end of the year, you can make the decision whether you, you're going to have to make that decision by January. Regardless of what you got, we're in June now, you have roughly five months, six months at best, to make a decision if you're going to keep three principles or not. So you're going to be in the same position now. But you can leave it as just principal, and it's a one-year position, and you can specify in the job description, these are the things we want these principles to focus on, and they have to work collaboratively as a threesome. They have to all work. Every principal has their own designated responsibilities as far as moving the vision forward. So, Amy, in your school, to your community, is a focus on outdoor education going to be something that is very new to them? Or is this something that was already being built within Woodbury that was already like supported by the community? Okay. And Eric, what about the arts, the performing arts piece, the art focus piece in Lakeview? I think we were moving in that direction. Okay. However, with Kristen Mary and moving on without her and her vision of what a musical program could look like, we kind of lost on that time. Okay, okay. But yeah. that was supported by the community? Yeah. So, so what I'm trying to get at is just that the concept of having somebody focusing on outdoor ed in Woodbury and focusing on arts in Lakeview, as far as the community is concerned, would not be a huge surprise. Is that okay? All right. Can I, I just add one, one piece. Yeah. We talked a lot about Woodbury and Lakeview. <laughs> Hardwood no, has I a know. really strong. I know. <laughs> we have a really strong outdoor education sustainability going on. But now. you're staying. With strong visual. <laughs> and so I'm not so worried. About I don't want the Hardwood I know. to think, oh, our great programs no, no, that no. we already have are now going to be. Diminished. They're not going to be diminished. No, I I think that it's I th I I, yeah. I was only asking that because I was okay. hearing people say this is going to be a total right. shock to the communities now that people are focusing on these things, and I wanted to just make sure that the communities had been behind these things when principals were running them, because I think that that would be a helpful thing when we are talking about this to people to say like. This is something that's already been happening, and the whole district wants to be doing this so that there's equity across the schools. I mean, I don't want to have not great principals, and that's, you know, I, I, I want these positions to be filled by great people. And so, 
because I don't think the schools will survive without that. They need good leaders, so. Okay, so where are we, guys? Can we do, can we create, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing from Phoebe that she would like to see the applicants who have been, who've applied for the Woodbury position. I'm feeling like we need to have some kind of like, okay, you're, we're creating a search committee so people can look at this stuff because I don't think that it's really, I don't think the whole board needs to see the applicants. It's going to be too much if we try to get into the whole board looking at all the applicants. So, I would really, no. I would really like for there to be a committee, a decision about a committee, and if we're doing two committees or one committee, knowing that we're going to hire two people for two different campuses that have different job descriptions in terms of their campuses and the focus of that person. Can I make a motion then? Yeah, we can. Um, so I'm just speaking for Lakeview because we're in a different stage of the process, but I would move that we um, reach out to the previous principal search committee at Lakeview, see how many are still available and interested, get myself or Rose um, or Luke or Laura, yeah. uh, sorry, on, also on that committee um, to form the newest principal search committee for Lakeview yes. campus. I'll second. Uh, yeah, second. Second. Okay. Somebody second that. <coughs> so, uh, is there any discussion? It sounds like then we're going for two committees. I'm, That's I am asking that question. Are you guys comfortable with going for two committees, boards? That means you're going to be. Yeah, you guys know what a committee I, is. I do. I just have to say, personally, I have, a, a, I have such a strong, passionate interest in being a part of this process. Mm -hmm. However, I am leaving the state on the 28th of June, and I, so I will not be here for that. So I can't, I can't participate in it. So. Just as a uh, point of reference for you, mm -hmm. the Lakeview board closed theirs, mm -hmm. so you guys will have to actually vote to to repost the right. Principal. Right, and we were talking about the Woodbury people, so I thought we could get to that after. Right. Yes. I was trying to get clarity with Sam's uh, motion. Which one? The one you just made. <laughs> <laughs> the one you just made. I'm throwing uh, all over the place. So I heard okay. that, uh, we visit the existing committee, the yep. committee that did TAC, and see how many are involved. And I heard include you two and you two. Or one of us, or two of us, some of us in some I just was trying to get clear. Yes. One of the four of us. Or two, at least one, if not four. And also, you wouldn't be able to get the student. We had students on the committees, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't be able to be likely. I imagine, but that might be a problem. Well, they graduated. Very important. I was on the committee. We also had a, one of the teachers that will now be a part of was on the committee, so, so there will be some new people. Yeah, we'll have to I'm willing to go out with that. So, are we looking at two committees? I'm still trying to understand that. It sounds like the motion is specifically to Lakeview. For Lakeview, Lake so that would be two committees. So, Kim, are you, do you have the time to be on the committee? Sure. Does it have to be? Can we delegate somebody that's from the? We need to have somebody. Who is, yeah, yes. somebody we need to have somebody on this board on the committee, and I I would think that Woodbury would want us to ask the two of you first. Mm -hmm. So I was going to see, and if Kim says he can do it, then I, I just can't. I, I know. To no, I totally it. understand. So, I totally understand. So one of the other things you, you certainly we have. Well, we did have two board members here. I mean, I mean, we can go back to the Woodbury board, and anybody else on that board could serve on there, too. Right, but they're just going to need to come to us and talk to us. <laughs> so we know what's going on. That's well, all. well, you got Kim. I know. Well, no, I'm saying, I'm, right. And yes, this we have just, Kim. I'm just saying. Search committee. Right. Okay. Well, I reached out to some teachers who were interested. They expressed interest. Yeah. Um, and I would imagine we have some community members that want to participate as well. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I don't think you'll have a problem with very getting people like this. I think in the future, you're, this won't be as complicated. But no, I think no. I agree with you. <laughs> okay, so um, are you all ready to vote on Sam's motion? So all in favor of... Uh, 
you need to have her modify oh, her uh, proposal to two committees, one for Greensboro, because she only uh, spoke to Greensboro, so it Thank needs you. to be modified to two committees, one for Greensboro and one for Woodland. Can you want amend your Sure. I will amend that to also form a search committee from the Woodbury community, including one of the board members, board members on this board, at least one. Do I have a second? A second. Okay, so all in favor, is there any more discussion? Okay, all in favor of Sam's amended motion? Aye. Say aye. 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 All, all opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, what's the next thing we need to do? Well, we got both, right now, both of them? Have a they don't have a post Okay. So what do you want me to do since you're asking me to come with a job description for, and I'm not sure why I'm coming with a job description when Woodbury's moving full steam with what they're doing and Lakeview Well, Woodbury post. wanted to, Phoebe's question was to be able to see the candidates that were there. We're meeting again on the 20th when we're supposed to see this job description. And from what I had understood, your from what I had understood when Woodbury was posting, they it was I, somebody said that we could change it if we needed to change it. So I feel like we needed to create a committee so that the people who had applied already could be looked at to see if there were people we were like, oh, this looks exciting. We're not going to be presenting any candidates on the 20th. I know you're not. Right. No, I know. So I, I'm not clear. Well, so, so, so the point, I guess, I'll clarify my, my thinking, is that um, there's a potential to cast a wider net <coughs> because we're trying to find great people, right? So we have a posting out. Is there a potential that we're getting great people? I have no idea because I don't, haven't seen the applicant pool. I can, I can imagine, but I can um, respond, but I won't do it in public session. So then, what we had talked about was that your office would come to the 20th meeting with this proposal to cast a wider yeah. net, which we're moving forward with. But my own, my thinking was that at that point, we at least somehow see what we've gotten in that two week period from the original oh, net that was cast. Yeah. Right. Is my point. And okay. is there anyone there that is worth pursuing? Because that will have been two weeks and it's been out there. Does that make sense? I would allow Joanne to provide you with a summary. It'd be just to the board to understand if there's viable candidates in there. And then the allow the committee to do the work and not bias mm -hmm. the board with any knowledge of the individual candidates and some of the people. That's the only thing I would say. Mm -hmm. Allow her to provide you with summary as to whether they're one or no viable candidates or two viable candidates. Or, right. And then allow the committee to do its work. Right. right. So. Is that, is that fair? Okay, so we've created a committee, two committees, and we've decided that we're getting a job description based on the proposal that was given to us tonight to see it on the 20th. Do we feel that we can move on from discussion about this particular topic? I just have a quick yes. question. I just think following Joanne's question, it, are we, <laughs> we're not posting ours until we do that new director position, the That's new description. The description. I mean, right. I, 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 but we're not doing anything until then, is that correct? <laughs> that was sort of what I thought I heard. I just wanted to make sure that was, well, it I just see, yes. seemed, yeah, that's what I was still wondering see, too. Do you want to authorize administrative position at Lakeview, or are you going to wait until the 20th? Right, that's, yeah, that's the question. What... <coughs> I, the Lakeview board just put it in our lap. Right, yes. I know. Okay. <laughs> and, then said, said, good luck. Luck. and then we said good so luck. So that's what I'm asking. Am I opening a new position, new ad? But what are they possibly it? changing? Or are yeah. we yeah. waiting? Well, I mean, we're, we're, if we opened we it, we would be, if we opened it now, we would say we're possibly going to change this in a week. Which doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. No, I and, think we should wait. And okay. so we can wait. Okay. I think. But I'm, I think we should wait, but I don't think we, you know, I think we, on the 20th, we, we really need to make a decision. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, so, should, so are, can we say yeah. we had a meeting set for 10 minutes? 
Yeah. So, <laughs> so we're going to have to all be comfortable with having to go there earlier than that. Or later, or whatever it is, however it works. Well, okay. yeah, that's going to be tricky. Because it's going to have to be later. later. Yeah. Starts There's no way, I mean, these other boards need to roll. And so you're talking maybe 8.15 before you guys can get back to a meeting. Well, then so we'll make a really good do, decision. Because I've got an agenda to go. i got to post some agendas, and I've already changed it three times now. So, because <laughs> I, I don't care. If you're going to meet at 8.15, I can have every other board end at 8.15, and then you... Or we meet on a different day other than that's the That's true. Oh. Can, we, can we move it up? Yeah, what if we drive it like the, the 18th, next Tuesday, week, uh, my calendar. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I think there's something yeah. going on on the 18th. The 18th is yes. the last yeah. day of school. Yeah, yeah. the 18th yeah. is the last day of school and we're at the central offices. Yeah. Other things going on. Um, does, does if we're all committed to the 20th, we're all going to be there. It just makes it... Not everybody's going to be there on the 20th. Oh, uh, why? Why not? Yes. We we had no, plans. but they're gonna they, they have going to, to come to the right. part of the. But that's why I was gonna say if but we then could it's start it later. It's gonna be a later start. That's I know. Trip. And can we not do it earlier? There's no school Kevin that day. Can't. Kevin can't. I, I can't do it. Six. You can't get there before no. six. So there, okay. there was time issues as far as people. Do we have to do it on a Tuesday? I mean, can we move it to the? What about the eighteenth? Eighteenth. Yeah. Eighteenth is not a good day. Oh, that's right. Nineteenth. Nineteenth. Going once, going twice. Okay. So I don't know my phone's recording. I can't check my phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, right now I don't see it. Where? Okay. 19th, um, how about, well. The next one would be at Harvard. We haven't so, been at Harvard for a while. So what happens if Kevin can't make it? Because he's not here to can make this. he call in? He probably, maybe, I don't know. It's I don't know why he can and cannot make meetings. So well, I can I, mean, I can offer can, that to him. If he can't make it, I personally would prefer to just have him. It just means that, that the folks who haven't been there all day are going to have to like stay up for an 8 o'clock meeting. But, but, Can yes. they come in at that? Like, oh, you guys could also mean. call in if you, want, if you wanted to at 8 o'clock. Well, I don't think, I mean, the first part is the FQ board meeting, right. which isn't, uh, it's, it's not bad for them to be part of that right. process. Right. And then they can go to the Lakeview meeting and be the last meeting for Lakeview, and yeah. Yeah. that could not be a bad thing. Not that and we're all already there, it seems like. I would, yeah. I you don't, you don't have to hire a sitter one night. Are you okay with the 20th? We want to just okay. do the 20th. Let's then. just stay with the 20th then. And I think that would be. For 8.15. Yeah. I'll try to have everybody else end by 8.15 and then you can roll in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe end of the day. Maybe not missed it. They're the last meeting. What are they going to do? Yeah. No, I'll just change it again. And so we're going to discuss the job descriptions for this. I just want to clarify. Yeah. There's the sports update that yep. was brought up. Anything else under action items that needs to be done? Uh, we, don't we have to sign the... Uh, we have to sign the... Yeah, we need to get the tax bill taken out on the 20th. The hard work Harding hard. on resolution on the 20th. Yeah. Yep. But there was the other thing that we had that. to sign too. The, the policies. Bit. The business. The business. The business. The business. Yeah. Yeah. And at this point, I'm going to move that we just leave the executive session for the 20th. Yes, so we're going to be there until like 10 o'clock. Well, this is, shouldn't be a long conversation. It shouldn't be a long conversation. I would rather get this settled. Can we just do it tonight, okay. then? Yeah, can we just, just do it tonight? So, okay. motion to go into executive session? So, let's, we have to... About signing those things. I, Are the signing them. of the things, can we just sign them or is it like we have to? Well, the TAN you've already approved. I just need you to sign the document. Okay, so can I sign the document? And we can also adopt all those policies. The policies we've all seen. They have to read something. Oh, yeah. Tax anticipation, you know. Oh, yeah, no, you don't want to do this tonight. Yeah, they've got to read that statement. So yeah, can, yeah. can we read, can we, can someone make a motion to adopt the policies? Adopt the previously adopted policies of the Lakeview Union, Hardwick Elementary, and Woodbury Elementary Boards. I make a motion that we do that. Okay. Uh, second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? There we go. Uh, motion carries. Um, what about Visbit? Um, Visbit, um, that's just a power of attorney. There's no, what can I do with that? 
Is it here? Is, is it this thing? No. Nope. Might be. So this is our insurance. Yeah, so this is your health insurance and dental insurance. For employees. For employees. So you're merging into one new entity, so they have it's to It's weird have, that we get power of attorney, but. Yeah, so it's just, no, you're giving the high power of attorney. Okay, that's weird still, but do, that's okay. To act on your behalf. Yep. So you need to move to grant Beehive Medical Benefits Program Power of Attorney and Beehive Dental Benefits Program Power of Attorney. Okay. Um. So this is actually to cover, provide coverage from July 1 to December 30th <coughs> of this fiscal year. Yeah. Because okay. you're now the employer of record as of July 1. So we have to get everything turned over, so we have to have VHI act on your behalf to get this taken care of. And you need to authorize Catherine to sign on your behalf, because there's only one spot for the signature. So somebody want to make a motion so, that makes sense out of all that? So I make a motion that we authorize the Catherine to sign um, on the board's behalf to give VHI power of attorney for the health and dental medical benefits program. And the unemployment program. And the unemployment Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Opposed. 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 Say no. Abstentions. Motion carries. Sorry, it's, I'm getting. I'm losing it. Let's try it. Yeah. Just board chair. Okay. I don't know if I had to write which board. Yeah, we're gonna do it. I'm just gonna sign this and then we're gonna go in. You can make the motion because you're gonna have the TV screen. Take okay. Some time. So motion to move to executive session after we sign. For personnel. For personnel. For personnel. Because. Oh, that's what it says for personnel. Okay, personnel. Do you have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor, moving to executive session, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Thank you.